Welcome back to a new problem. As shown in the figure below, line segment AD is trisected by points B and C, so that AB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to 2. We're also told that the three semicircles shown have a radius of 1, and that AEB, BFC, and CGD have diameters on AD and are tangent to EG at E, F, and G, respectively. We're also told that A has a circle radius of 2, and its center is on F. We're told that the area inside the region that's shaded, but outside of the three non-shaded circles is expressed by the following expression, and we're trying to find the summation of A, B, C, and D. So given this information, let's copy paste this information and write it onto a much larger point of reference. On the test, obviously you can just roughly redraw the shape, but for terms of um, accuracy, I'll just be copy pasting. So in this case, let's try to divide it up into simpler shapes, because that's what you do for geom geometry questions. <coughs> One of the things that I do not want to do is to solve the white area and then subtract it out from the black area such as this. If I were to connect it out and subtract the white area from the total circle area. The reason why for this is because while it's poorly drawn, these are curved lines. So solving this area would not be very easy. But instead, if I were to break this um, shape down into simpler shapes, I think it would help me get through it. So if I were to draw EF and, e, F, and FG, um, I would get a line like this. And for geometry questions, it's typically best to draw straight lines such as this to break it up into simpler geometric shapes. So given this information, let's break this area down into these regions. I'll call this X, I'll call this Y, and since this is the same, this will be Y as well, and this will be Z. So what is the area of region X? Well, region X is just half of the entire circle area with a radius of two. So that's half times pi times four, which is two pi. Now, what about Y? Y is a little bit trickier because we need to consider how to solve it and break it down into simpler questions. So let's first finish this circle by drawing this curved line and this curved line and drawing the lines of EB and BF. When in doubt, always draw straight lines to break the question down into simpler shapes. In this case, we have an isosceles triangle of EBF because E and F are equally spaced about B. So this is equal to this side, but that doesn't really matter here because what is the height of this triangle? Well, the height of this triangle is the same as this radius, right? Because we're told that this semicircle radius is 1. We're also told that the base of EF is 2, because again, that's just the radius of the larger circle. <coughs> Given this information, we can easily solve for triangle EBF. EBF will just be 2 times 1 divided by 2, which gives you 1. But what about that pesky little white region right here? Well, that region can be broken down into, if I were to draw this segment, a quarter circle subtracted from a right triangle. So if I were to have this entire shape, what is the region of this equal to? Well, that's equal to this entire figure's area minus this area. So how do I find the entire area of the outer shape? Well, the outer shape is just a quarter circle. So that area is just one fourth of the entire circle area, which in this case with a radius of one would just be pi over four. Now, what about the right triangle? The right triangle has a base of one and a height of one. So that means the area will be one half. So that means pi over 4 minus 1 half would give me this area right here. But since in the isosceles triangle we have two of these shapes, we must multiply this result by 2 to give us the area of both of them combined. Since we have the area of EBF, we must subtract this from 1, so we must minus 2 times pi over 4 minus 1 half, which if we simplify will be equal to 1 minus pi over 2 plus 1, which is 2 minus pi over 2. But since we have two of these triangles and we have two areas y, we have two y's, so that means 2y will be equal to 2 times 2 minus pi over 2 will be equal to 4 minus pi. So that's the area of both y's combined, but what about the area of z? Well, to find the area of z, we're going to have to redraw the graph in order to get a better visual of what's going on. So if I were to enlarge it, such as this, how do I find that bottom area of z? Well, let's draw more straight edges. So let's draw EF, let's draw FD, right? If I were to draw these shapes, how do I find Z? Well, first of all, if I were to draw this altitude down, I have all the sides needed for this triangle. This is one previously established, and EF to this point right here is just another radius. So this would be two. So that means the base will be root of two squared four minus one gives root three. So root three will be the base. But wait a minute, doesn't this look a little familiar? If I were to use the sine of this angle right here, let's call that theta, sine of theta would give me root 3 over 2. For special trigonometric angles, theta will be equal to 60 degrees. So if that's 60 degrees, then this is also 60 degrees. Combined, 
angle, if I were to give this a name, let's call this, um, let's call this I and J, angle I, F, J will be 2 times 60 degrees, which gives 120 degrees in total. So if that's my total degrees, then what is the area of arc, so arc, F, I, J? Well, that's just 120 over 360 of the entire circle area, which gives you one third. So that's one third of the entire area of the circle, so that's pi times 4, which gives 4 pi over 3. <coughs> Given this information, we know that <clears throat> we need to subtract out triangle IFJ. And that would just be equal to 2 times the area of triangle FIZ. So what is FIZ? Well, that's just 2 times the base of root 3 times the height of 1 divided by 2. So that would just be equal to root 3. So if both of the two areas is three, is root 3, that means the area of z will be equal to 4 pi over 3 minus um, root 3. So we have z's area, we have 2y's area, and we have x area, which is just 2 pi. We sum them up, and we will get our final answer. So let's do that. So 4 minus pi plus 2 pi plus 4 pi over 3 minus root 3 would give you, if I were to combine negative pi and 2 pi, that would just be 4 minus root 3 plus pi plus 4 pi over 3, which gives what? 4 minus root 3 plus 7 pi over 3. So we've simplified this to its fully reduced form, so we have it in the given criteria. So a, b, c, and d would just be the following um, whole numbers within this expression. So that would be 4, 3, 7, and 3. If we sum them up, we'll get our answer. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10. So that gives 10, plus 7 gives 17. So we should have an answer 17, and if you scroll up, indeed, answer choice E is our final answer.